In this video, I'm going to take up part A of the MHF4U practice exam that um, I will also put the link to again if you haven't found it yet. I did post it on the last video as well. So let's take a look at these first 10 questions. It's uh, Christmas Eve day today, so um, I don't have a lot of time, but I did want to get you going on something before uh, I get really wrapped, wrapped up. Ha ha. Okay, so let's say you look at this exam and you open up the first page and you see factor x cubed plus 125 and you go, oh my god, I don't remember how to factor a sum of cubes. I know there is such a thing as a sum of cubes, difference of cubes. Teacher didn't give you the formula. So I guess maybe right now is the time to learn the formula unless your teacher is going to be nice enough to give it to you. It's easy to remember and I'll show you how you can do it. So this is a cubed plus b cubed. Okay, so all you have to do is write up what you see here without the cubes, a plus b. And then in the brackets, you have an a squared, you have an ab, and you have a b squared. Okay, so a squared, ab, b squared, not 2ab. Okay, it's not, you're not squaring a binomial here. You're factoring a different, a sum of cubes. So because this is plus, this is going to be minus, and it's always plus at the end. So if it was minus b cubed, this would be a minus b, and then you put a plus here. Okay, so what's the cube root of x cubed? x, what's the cube root of 125? 5, and you're off to the races. So you have x plus 5 times x squared minus 5x plus 25. There you go, you got one mark. Yay! Express 130 degrees in terms of pi. Okay, so we want radians in terms of pi. So you know that 130 degrees is how many pi radians? But you do know that 180 of them would be pi. So there's your formula. Just going to do x. Remember the little n thing I showed many times before? So you go down, across, and down. So x is pi times 130 over 180. So x equals, I'm going to write it here, and then I'm going to simplify it for you. So 130 pi over 180. And all you can cross out are those zeros. So that's 13 pi over 18. Two marks, yay. For the function y equals negative 2 cos 2x plus pi over 3 minus 1, state the amplitude. So remember that when you talk about amplitude, it's always an absolute value. Do not say the amplitude is negative 2. The amplitude is simply 2. What is the period? The period, remember, comes from the little formula. We have um, period equals 2 pi over k. And in this case, our k is a 2. So 2 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, that's going to give you pi. Now your teacher is only going to look here because they're only worth one mark, right? So as much as you might know what you're doing, if they're only worth, worth one mark, it's only looking for the answer. What is a phase shift rel relative to y equals cos x? So the phase shift, remember, oh look, teacher's trying to fool you again. That was me. You have to factor out the coefficient of x. Don't forget that. You probably got nailed on that in grade 11. Don't let it happen in grade 12. So this becomes pi over 6. Make sure you divide it properly. Minus 1. So you always double check to expand. So 2 times pi over 6 would be 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3. If you said, um, I don't know, 2 pi over 3, and you tried to multiply it out, you would not get this again, right? So that's a good way to check it. So phase shift, it says plus, so it's going to be pi over 6 left. What is the y maximum? Okay, so this is your axis. So axis is at 1. Negative 1, sorry, negative 1 here. And so I'm going to add and subtract 2 from that. That would give me my maximum. And minusing 2 would give me the minimum. So here's my max. Here's my min. But I'm only asked for the max. So the max is 1. Express secant 3 pi over 2 plus theta as a trigonometric ratio of theta. 
Okay, so when you see this 3 pi over 2, you'd be thinking co-functions, right? The co-functions, anything pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. So remember where you are at 3 pi over 2, that would be here. And I'm adding theta, so I'm going to be in the C quadrant. So secant in this quadrant is positive. That's the first thing you check. You check the sign of the function that you're starting with. Okay, don't go to its co-function. So secant and cosine, that means it's going to be positive. So I don't have to write a positive here, just don't need to worry about that. And secant goes to cosecant. So it's the cosecant of theta. Express m to the x equals p in the logarithmic form. So this is our little b a log b. There you go. If you can remember this little saying, be a log bay, it's right there for you. So b, this is my m, is b. So it's going to be the log of m, because b is here, right? The exponent is p. So log m p equals a, oh no, not a, sorry. That's my a here, p. Ah! was distracted for a minute and made a mistake made a mis mistake so if it's the log base m of p equals should be x right okay because the exponent is x that goes here base answer exponent base exponent answer okay so remember this little saying here though that will really help you along Express log x minus 1 minus a half log y 1 log y plus 3 log x is a single log. Okay, so each of these can be, re well, not the first one. The first one can't do much with that. That's log of x minus 1. Now, I'm going to move the exponents first. So this becomes the exponent of y. So it's y to the 1 half. And the 3 becomes log of x cubed. Okay, so I'm dividing. So if you're dividing, this goes in the denominator. If you're adding, you're multiplying. So I get the log of x minus 1 times x squared. And it's going to be divided by y to the half is the square root of y. Now you could expand this. I didn't leave myself much room to. Should have had some scrap paper. Okay, so I have the log of x to the fourth minus x cubed all over square root y. That would be a pretty nice answer. Okay, evaluate. Log base 4, 16 root 4. So when you see the 4 here, it's best if you can get these written with a base of 4, which you can do here. So that's the log base 4 of 4 squared times 4, now remember the square root is a half power. So 4 squared times 4 to the half, I'm multiplying the bases are the same, I can add the exponents. So I'm making too many equal signs on my one line for my liking. So this is 4 over 2 plus 1 over 2, so it's the log of 4 to the 5 over 2. So that means my answer is 5 over 2. Okay, evaluate this one. 2, 6, 2, log, base 6, 4. Okay, so if the base is the same as the um, base of the exponent here, I just have to move this up here. So that means this is going to be 6 to the power of log base 6 of 4 squared, which is 16. And there's my answer, 16. Log base 532, correct answer to two decimal places. So if you want two decimal places, that's pretty obvious that you're going to need to use your calculator. So remember that you can do change of base formula. I can do log of 32 divided by the log of 5. Now that's going to require a calculator. So let's bring one in here. So I've got the log of 32 divided by the log of 5, and I get 2.153. Two decimal places would be 2.15. Okay, moving on to bigger things here. We have number 8 given this. So 
f equals this set of coordinates and g is this, what's f plus g? So you know that in order to add them together, you have to have the same x coordinates. So this one and this one we can add. This one has a zero and this one has a zero. There's none for that one. We have a two zero and a two minus three and this one and this one we can't use. So I just have to add the y coordinates of this. So I'm going to say f plus g equals curly bracket. I had minus 2 and I add 5 and 3 gives me 8. This is a nice easy mark, isn't it? And 0 and minus 1, 0, minus 1. So that's going to be 0 and minus 2. And 2 and minus 3. Okay, if f at x equals x plus 2 and g at x equals x minus 1, determine f at g at minus 1. So remember to start on the inside here, I want to know what is g at minus 1? So g at minus 1 is going to be minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2. And now f at minus 2, so I'm going to put that in over here, minus 2 plus 2, and that's going to be 0. So my answer is zero. Keep happy, keep happy face. Okay, and number 10 for the function h and x equals 2 to the 3x plus 4. Determine f and x and g and x such that h and x, which is what we have here, is f at g at x. So we can use this little exponent as our g at x. And if I took that out and replace it with an x, that would mean that f at x could be 2 to the x. So if f at x equals 2 to the x and g at x is equal to 3x plus 4. So you can see if I put f at this, I would get right back to that. Okay, so that's the first part of a practice exam for you. Again, I'll put the link with this in the description for this as well. You can go and download it. And then there's part B of 58 marks. And what we'll do is I'll probably break that into a couple of little little videos for you. Don't forget to subscribe so that you can be the first to know about when I start the calculus course. And I wish you all the best of luck with your final exam.